Welcome learners. In the previous lesson, we talked about biodiversity and how the steaming millions of species which have inhabited the earth earlier or are still present could be classified, studied, identified and given names. Today we shall talk about what is called the history of life. And what does history of life means? I mean, it simply means that in all these very many years, which are to the tune of 4 to 5 billion years, many, many species have gained existence on this earth and how that happened and how actually the first organisms came about, all this we will study in this lesson. In fact, the objectives of the lesson are to learn about origin of the earth, origin of, the, of life, the first cells, the evolution of life and Darwin's theory which is the best and the most valid and acceptable theory even till today regarding how life evolved. Other than that, we shall also learn about the various evidences for evolution, the evidence for origin of life and also the levels of evolution and in the end, we shall also learn about ourselves, how exactly humans evolved. So, let us begin and see what is the age of this earth. The earth learners actually came into existence between 4 to 5 billion years ago. For short, we usually say BYA. So, you can well imagine how early and how many years behind us was 4 to 5 billion years ago. In those 4 to 5 billion years ago, there were many, many living beings that evolved and inhabited the earth. But the first organisms which arose were around 3 to 3.5 billion, year, billion years ago. Now, when the earth first formed, they, you must have heard, they say there is a big bang theory, that there was a big bang in which matter rotated and broke apart into pieces and around a shining star, the sun, there were several other planets which together formed the solar system. Our earth was one of them and our earth in fact is the only planet, we call it the green planet where life abounds. Till now, no other planet has been found to have any life. So, let us begin with when the life originated and how exactly the scientists think life originated. Uh, for the first say 1 or 1.5 billion years, there was no life on earth. And even after that, for some time, there could not be any life because the atmosphere on earth was so very different. In fact, the temperature was so high that life could not arise at all because everything was in the gaseous state. You all know that when we heat water, what happens? It is a liquid, but at higher temperature, it becomes a gas. Similarly, there were several gases which were in the primitive atmosphere and the temperature was so high that all these gases remained in their gaseous state. Let me tell you what were these gases. These gases were carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, nitrogen and lots and lots of water vapor in the 
primitive atmosphere. Mind you, there was no oxygen whatsoever. Now, in this primitive earth, life could not come to be at all. So, what happened later on between some time approximately between 3.5 to 3 billion years ago, suddenly there was cooling of this earth and as the temperature came down you can well imagine what happened to the, all the water vapor. It all became water and there were torrential rains and now because of climate change we do see torrential rains. It is raining and raining and raining and you can imagine how torrential they were earlier so many billion years ago and they formed big oceans on earth. Now, it is in water that life first evolved, but how did life evolve? All the gases which got dissolved in water, all the chemicals that were in the atmosphere, they got dissolved in water and they came into the ocean as chemical compounds. So, what were these chemical compounds which could give rise to life? They were the amino acids, there were nitrogenous bases about which you know so well now that they form parts of the biological molecules like proteins, carbohydrates, fats, nucleic acids etcetera. So, let us again think about it in the beginning in water chemicals were formed which were small molecules and today we know that biological molecules are macromolecules or large molecules which formed from all these chemicals which were washed into water. So, amino acids got together to form proteins, the glucose units and the other you know small sugar monosaccharide units got together to form the carbohydrates and nucleic acids uh, were assembled as you know you all know that there is a there is a pentose sugar and a phosphate moiety and um, the nitrogenous bases they form the nucleic acids. So, we all know what are the biomolecules of life? They are proteins and nucleic acids which are actually the major biomolecules. So, now we know that in primitive earth as it cooled sometime between uh, 3 and 3.5 billion years ago life began first as inanimate biomolecules and then these biomolecules got together and nobody really can say that they were the first cells because nobody has yet been able to make a cell in the laboratory. Although many scientists have been able to make life like or cell like um, configurations in the laboratory, but then nobody has been able to create life as yet. Nobody has been able to make a living cell, but in science you all know that without evidence nothing or no theory can be accepted. So, the best theory given for origin of life was the theory given by uh, by a. I. Oparin and Haldane, J. B. S. Haldane. Now, A. I. Oparin's theory of origin of life is the best accepted theory and according to them it is the biomolecules which were first formed and they assembled into cells and then from cells all life arose. And Stanley Miller and Harold Urey, two scientists, they wanted to actually create and uh, biomolecules in the lab itself. And Stanley Miller and Urey's experiment proved that indeed bases 
and uh, precursors of bases like the hydrocyanic acid etcetera can be actually prepared in the laboratory and they then set up an experiment. So, so far so good there was evidence now from the laboratory and even today Oparin and Haldane's theory of origin of life as I have just explained to you stands true. Once earth originated and then life originated, let us see what happened thereafter. You have just learned that these were chemicals, the chemicals were together and the chemicals actually reacted with each, with each other. So, this part of you know origin of any living um, li uh, origin of life is called chemical evolution. So, in chemical evolution the first signs of life began and after that thereafter it is all biological evolution. To begin with actually the first cells were those which resembled the bacteria of today. And you know we have um, found fossils, micro fossils they are called which can be seen under the microscope which resemble the first bacteria and which in fact are fossils of the first bacteria which have been uh, you know the fossils have been dated and found to be around 3.5 billion years ago. This is has been possible in Kudramuk in Karnataka. So, we really have in our country the fossils of the first bacteria. Now, for the first 2 billion years let me tell you the bacteria were all in all they were the emperor of all they surveyed. For 2 billion years there were no other organisms found on earth. The first organisms were the bacteria and they ruled the earth, but they you know divide they sort of formed many many new kinds of bacteria. There was evolution of many kinds of bacteria. I just told you that in primitive earth there was no oxygen even when life evolved there was no oxygen. So, these were chemosynthetic bacteria and who made their food from chemicals and there was no oxygen so they were also anaerobic. But as time passed you know there were certain bacteria which could photosynthesize and these bacteria therefore, lent a lot of oxygen to the atmosphere. Learners if you go back and study photosynthesis you will know that oxygen is produced as a byproduct when um, photosynthesis takes place. So, once oxygen was in the atmosphere lo and behold there were so many different kinds of organisms that came to exist on earth. And therefore, if we were to see the sequence of steps in the history of life, we begin from origin of life some between 4 and 3.5 billion years ago, I am sorry 3.5 to 3 billion years ago. Then 3.5 to 3 there were majority of them were all you know uh, anaerobic and the first pro prokaryotes I think you uh, now you know that bacteria are prokaryotes and they were or bacteria are the first organisms that evolved on earth as life began. Okay? Now, from this bacteria then came many other bacteria which now could respire oxygen. So, again starting from the biomolecules to the first cells to the first chemical uh, chemosynthetic and anaerobic bacteria to now those bacteria which could also photosynthesize and so they have become autotrophs by then and which could also breathe in oxygen. So, this is how life evolved. Now, once oxygen was there all around there was no problem from 
the prokaryotes, we got the eukaryotes and the eukaryotes as you know are the nucleated organisms. So, it's, uh, those who have nuclei in their cells. So, first the bacteria, unicellular prokaryotes, then the eukaryotes, the protozoans which are again unicellular, from them arose the multicellular organisms which belong to three kingdoms as you all know, the fungi, the planti and the animali. And slowly and slowly the plant kingdom had so many different kinds of plants. The animal kingdom then came and we first had the um, you know the earliest sponges or porifera, then we had the cnidaria, then the platyhelminthes, then the askelminthes, then the annelids, the arthropods, mollusks and then we had the echinodermata, the starfish like animals and also balanoglossus like hemichordates. Now from them then the chordates evolved and today we find the fish, we find the many kinds of reptiles like the lizards, the turtles, the uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, snakes and uh, you also know that their predecessors or their ancestors were the dinosaurs which were the only ones which ruled the earth. So, all this is part of history. Now, having told you about origin of earth, origin of life and first self formation and formation of all life, let me tell you that these you know uh, 3 billion years of the earth's life from when first organisms evolved, the scientists, the paleontologists or the, those who study fossils have divided the age or the time and given what is known as the geological time scale. So, the time scale is the history of the earth when all these different um, kinds of species arose. But mind you just as many of you might have seen Jurassic Park and know that there was once upon a time an age when there were many many different kinds of dinosaurs huh? and I am sure you enjoyed the beautiful movie by Steven Spielberg. And uh, if you have not seen it, do please see it and you will really enjoy it. Now, there are so many facilities you can just see it on your computers, access and see. Now, uh, the, I wanted to tell you this to impress upon you that even during the geological time scale there were certain periods when suddenly there was a spurt in evolution. For example, I just told you about these, the dinosaurs Mesozoic. The Jurassic period in Mesozoic was the age of dinosaurs and much much before that some 542 million years ago, just try and think how far ago that was and then at that point of time there was a sudden spurt, the climatic conditions were so congenial for lot of evolution to take place and almost all the invertebrate phyla that you have studied about in your last lesson, in your previous lesson on classification of organisms, they all evolved during that period which was 542 million years ago and which was called the Cambrian era. Now, the Cambrian actually had so many different new kinds of species coming up that it has been termed Cambrian explosion during the geological time scale. So, after the geological time scale, I would like to tell you that all organisms have come about due to biological evolution. Now, chemical evolution originated life, 
biological evolution evolved all the different kinds of species we see on earth and even those which have now become extinct. So, who talked about the biological evolution? Charles Darwin, you know Charles Darwin really was a great man. He actually his father was a doctor and he was uh, the, the parents dreamt of his becoming a physician too. But he was so much interested in nature and if you just access um, from Google, you know the his uh, Charles Darwin's um, uh, sojourn and voyage on a, on a ship which was called the Beagle, you will know how he studied all the different kinds of animals and plants that he saw on his way. It is a lot and lot of work that he did and also consulted all his contemporaries and came to a conclusion that all the different kinds of living beings we see on this earth have had common ancestry. Before that you know there were theories like special creation which said God had created the world and it is still the same. Some other people said no from space some inanimate matter came and from that life arose on earth which is called the extraterrestrial theory of origin of life. There is another theory which says that no on earth itself there was some inanimate matter from which life arose and then evolved. But today we know that all organisms all kinds of species sorry have evolved by means of what he called what Charles Darwin called natural selection. So, he contributed to the academic world and academic literature uh, the his book called origin of species and in which he kind of reiterated again and again that actually all the different kinds of organisms are found on earth are uh, connected or related through ancestry. They have had common ancestors at some period of time on earth and second thing he suggested a mechanism which he called natural selection and he said that natural selection actually uh, is the mechanism nature selects. Now, what did he say? He had a he put up a theory in which he said that natural selection selects those uh, organisms out of a population which are best adjusted to the kind of climate that is prevalent at a place. Now, this theory of course, was later on you know in the light of prog more and more progress in genetics and other sciences of uh, sub sciences of biology rather his theory was modified. He, Charles Darwin's theory is called origin of species through natural selection and that was then modified into what is called the synthetic theory of evolution. Well, now, what is synthetic theory of evolution? According to this theory, it is not an individual that evolves, it is a population that evolves. So, the population is the unit of evolution in which genetic variations are seen you know either through recombination or mutation and natural selection interacts with variation to select those variations and bring about more and more reproduction or which is called differential reproduction of those genes which are better which help to adapt better to the physical conditions where those organisms live. So, first unit of evolution is a population, it is the population which evolves Second point variation arise in a population through various sources. Number three natural selection interacts with variation and brings about greater reproduction of the best adjusted adapted uh, organisms and then they pass on their well adapted genes to the next generation and a new species may eventually form. This is in very simple words what exactly is the synthetic theory of evolution. 
Now, some, let me tell, give you some examples. See, these days you must have heard that that antibiotic did not work. Hmm? Why? Because the bacteria have become resistant to that antibiotic. That means, bacteria has evolved into another kind genetically, so that it can, it can resist a particular antibiotic to which it was earlier sensitive. Similarly, you must have heard that earlier DDT could kill mosquitoes, but it no longer can. Why? Because mosquitoes have evolved and have been naturally selected such mosquitoes which are resistant to DDT. So, you get a new species of uh, mosquitoes or particular species of mosquito which does not um, get killed by DDT. So, all these are examples of natural selection and then um, you also have there is a you know after the industrial revolution there was one peppered moth which were which had uh, little specks on it and you know with industrial revolution there were many industries suit covered and the uh, lichens and the trees and that uh, peppered moth evolved from this earlier peppered moth which was black. Earlier also there would be black peppered moths, but which could be easily seen on trees and tree barks and uh, lichens and would be eaten up by birds. After this, when the soot covered trees had black moths, they were not seen, the others were eaten up. So, the black moths became adapted to the environment full of soot. This is again another example of natural selection and I can really quote many, many more. So, you also try and find out uh, more examples of natural selection to understand this. Now, I will tell you that where are the evidences for this evolution, organic evolution through natural selection. Now, the first evidence are the fossils and I am going to show you some fossils. See, this is a 1 million year old fish huh? and fossils have shown they are very different from the fish that you can see today and therefore, these form the ancestors of fish. Similarly, I have ancestors of insects which were called the trilobites. The trilobites, you can see their segmented body, the trilobites are the ancestors of insects and they are now fossils, they are like stones. Then here is another fossil in my collection which is the forefathers of mollusks. You can also see another one this of bivalves. Now, this is called the paleontological evidence or fossil evidence that evolution has occurred. The second evidence is what is comes from comparative anatomy and you can see your um, slide you in which they show how limbs have a common structure. Similarly, there is embryological evidence to show that embryos of different groups of vertebrates at different um, stages are very similar to each other again points to common ancestry. And then you can also have from in your slides you will have one on how geographically they are distributed to show that evolution has truly and really taken place. And today we have a molecular evidence. See DNA is the genetic material of all living beings. Proteins uh, are made of amino acids and 20 amino acids make proteins of all living beings. Of course, biology is a science of exception and there are a few exceptions. Similarly, the protein synthesis DNA replication, all these processes are similar in all living beings, which shows that truly evolution has taken place. Now, where does actually evolution take place? It takes place uh, uh, at the level of the population, which we call microevolution, and also it takes place at the level of genus and species. So, spe when it takes place in species and genus, it is called macroevolution or adaptive radiation. 
Now, lastly, let us talk about our own evolution. We at one point of time, you know, sometimes during the Miocene period of the Cenozoic era, which is the age of the mammals, we, they, we had common ancestors with the great apes. Today, we have only four different apes, uh, two in, um, you know, in Indonesia and Malaysia and two in Africa, the chimpanzee, the orangutan, the uh, gibbon and um, the gorilla. And, but how different we are from there and from the ancestors, there were stages. The first one was Australopithecus, which is truly the primitive human being. You must have heard of Lucy whose fossils have been found in Africa, who was an Australopithecin. And this, if you see the various stages, you will know the sequence. And we come to the end of this chapter. But before I go away, I would just like you to um, remember a few points. The age of the earth, 4.5 billion years ago, so to say. Origin of life between 3 and 3.5 billion years ago. The first origin of life, how you know biomolecules formed cells and after oxygen came into earth, there was a spurt of biological evolution from chemical evolution. You must remember the name of Charles Darwin and know and learn what is natural selection and what is the modern synthetic theory of evolution and also get to know about our own evolution and remember the evidences that have proven that all life has come into existence through biological evolution. Thank you learners.